Hello and welcome back to Retro Futurism and Animation, our ongoing exploration of animated futures from the past. Today, we are going to be looking at the future of Christmas as well as other December holidays according to Futurama. Now, we have covered Futurama on this channel before. Uh, to quickly reiterate, this was cartoonist Mac Renning's follow up to The Simpsons. It followed Fry, a delivery boy from the 20th century, who gets transported to the 31st, where he becomes a delivery boy. <laughs> The series evolved around the adventures of Fry and his crewmates, Bender and Leela, as they deliver packages across the universe. It first premiered on Fox in 1999, where it ran until 2003, and was revived on Comedy Central from 2008 to 2013. Well, the series takes place in the 31st century, it satirizes the 20th and 21st, looking at then-modern culture and personalities through the lens of futurism. Contemporary celebrities could appear as themselves, with their heads and consciousness kept alive inside a jar. Uh, now, as we are approaching the holidays, uh, we are going to be covering three festive episodes, starting with Season 2's Xmas Story. This first aired on December 19th, 1999, and was written by series co-creator David X. Cohen. Uh, it was directed by Peter Evanzino. The plot revolves around Fry learning what Christmas in the future is like. Uh, a lot has changed in a thousand years. Uh, he first learns that it is no longer known as Christmas, it is now just Xmas. Palm trees have replaced pine uh, in terms of Christmas trees. <laughs> the crew chops down the tree with a laser axe. The plot follows a conventional Christmas special, with Fry seeking the perfect gift for Leela. Uh, at one point, he considers a joy-seeking rocket. In terms of other innovations, we get a hovering ski lift as well as bobsleds. Uh, I love the design and the absurdity of the ski lift. Uh, the trees on the ski hill are also controlled by uh, voice, so you can say trees up or trees down. At one point, it parodies the famous Harold Lloyd scene from Safety First, only with a digital clock. We also get throwaway lines, or gags, that inform the chronology. Uh, Bender receives a Christmas card from his mother. Fry is thankful that they still have snow and that global warming never happened, uh, which we no longer call it that. Uh, today, it's climate change. Leela tells him it did happen, uh, but that nuclear winter balanced things out, which is horrifying. <laughs> still, the most blatant development is that Santa has been replaced by Killer Robot, uh, voiced here by John Goodman. The Santabot was designed by Mom's Friendly Robot Company in 2801 as a way to distinguish naughty and nice children, though a programming error turned him into a killing machine. He hunts anyone who has been caught outside after sundown. Santa will return two years later in Season 4's A Tale of Two Santas. This aired on December 23rd, 2001, and expanded upon the holiday lore. In this episode, the crew was tasked with delivering children's letters to Santa, with a spin that rather than asking for gifts, they ask him not to come. One kid actually asked for a coffin for his grandfather, who Santa killed the previous year. Santa's workshop is located on the North Pole of Neptune. It is a destitute community with the indigenous species enslaved as elves. Wanting to return Christmas to its warm, sentimental past, the crew attempts to defeat Santa with a logical paradox. They paint his actions as naughty, and if he is to destroy all those who have been naughty, he must destroy himself. Uh, this fails, but fleeing the fuel from their ship melts the snow around the pursuing Santa, freezing him in place. Uh, this leads to Bender becoming Santa. The rest of the episode deals with his shortcomings before he teams up with the other Santa. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's actually pretty light on innovations. Uh, we learn that the state executes robots by electromagnetic energy. Uh, the polar bear plunge is also referenced. Uh, for those unfamiliar, this is when people dive into freezing water, <laughs> basically. It's done here in Canada on New Year's Day. Uh, in the future, uh, rather than dive into freezing cold water, people dive into ammonia. We also get the first appearance by Kwanzaabot, uh, voiced by Coolio, which is really great. It plays up the fact that many don't know or understand what Kwanzaa is. Uh, I certainly didn't when this first aired. Kwanzaa is a holiday that was created in 1966 by Dr. Malana Karanga to give African Americans an alternative to Christmas and the opportunity to celebrate themselves and their history rather than participate in the traditions of the dominant society. It takes place between December 26 and January 1st and celebrates what Karanga called the Seven Principles of Kwanzaa which are unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. Each is celebrated on one of these seven days and are represented by the lighting of seven candles placed in a holder known as a canara. This would be explained in a song in a segment in the third and final Futurama Holiday Special, 2010's The Futurama Holiday Spectacular. Now, the first two episodes we looked at both aired during the show's initial Fox run and featured references to that period, so the late 90s, early 2000s. Jumping ahead to its Comedy Central run, we get updated references, uh, the most notable being that 
Dick Cheney appears as Nixon's vice president. It's structured like a Simpsons Trios of Horror, uh, or Futurama's own anthology of interest, so three different segments. Its Xmas segment features the crew searching for a real pine tree, uh, which has been extinct for hundreds of years. Uh, there's nothing really new and exciting in this uh, in terms of innovations. Uh, the next segment features Robonica, a play off of Hanukkah. One of the Robonica traditions is Fembot's wrestling in oil for six and a half weeks. Unfortunately, there's only enough oil for four and a half weeks as Earth's petroleum reserves have been exhausted. So the crew drills to the planet's core, things go wrong, and all but Bender perish. 500 million years pass, Bender returns to discover that the bots are still wrestling, which he calls a robotic miracle. And the third is the aforementioned Kwanzaa segment. This follows the crew as they search for beeswax to make the Kwanzaa candles. This brings them back to the hive that was featured in the episode The Sting. The bees are struggling uh, to create wax though, due to parasites. Hermes teaches the bees about Kwanzaa, which kills the parasites and unites them against the crew. And the segment ends with the bees celebrating Kwanzaa with their candles made from the crew. All three of these segments obviously have heavy environmental themes. Uh, Al Gore, who was once the poster child for climate change, even makes an appearance. They are non-canonical, though Futurama doesn't really have one canon, at least for the period between 1999 and Fry's arriving in the future. I've been wanting to cover Futurama for a while here, but tracking the quote-unquote predictions of the whole series uh, was a pretty daunting task, so hopefully you have enjoyed uh, this festive trip into that world. If you haven't seen it, check out our video on the Futurism of the Simpsons, which includes the fantastic Holidays of Future Past, uh, as well as the crossover with Futurama. It's very similar in tone. If you have the means, please consider supporting us on Patreon. That's the only place to see Century of Schlock, our exploration of trash media from the 20th century. There's a new episode over there now. As always, thank you so much for your interest in this channel, and thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.